Hello, welcome to Third Eye Thinkers. I'm your host, Michelle Welch. Hi, I'm your host, Megan Benanti. Thank you for joining us today. If you guys would like to give us a shout out during the show, please connect with Michelle on Soultopia face, at my Facebook page or at Soultopia on Instagram. And if you'd like to connect with Megan, reach out to her at, at her Instagram at Megan Benanti. All right, guys. So we're in for a good show today. You get just Michelle and I because that's the magic of us, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, today's subject, apophenia, like what is that? So we have a lot to talk about. You yes. Wanna, you want to dive in? It was so funny because I went back, I think I texted you yesterday or the day before, I don't know, or either I dreamed it, that I called and said, what the heck? Oh, no, you totally <laughs> did, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing again? When, when did we come up with this? <laughs> yeah, like she totally blanked out on like what this is, and I was like, it was your idea. <laughs> I was like, um... Did we channel that? Because I don't even remember us. We had a really good meeting. Um, but it was okay. that morning we met with uh, Erica and stuff. So it was good. We, so yeah, it must be that we were supposed to talk. I, and so apophenia, just to say it, you know, for me, is hard enough. I know. It so, makes me feel like I'm, I, I'm scientific. Trying so. to be really smart here. But, no, I think it started because we were talking about um, people seeing all the different ways, like seeing things in the clouds or seeing um, synchronicities and all the differences of things like that, right? Yeah, and this opened up a window for us to like begin to look at some different ideas. And um, I loved kind of researching through apophenia because I was like, oh, this is what I do. And then it was like, oh, this is not what I do. And it's good to have some clarity on that. So what, do you, what would you think would be, like, what did you get that apophenia is? Okay, so I, I started basically with the dictionary. Um, and That's a very good place to start. I know. <laughs> I'm so creative thinking outside of the box. No, there. me too. That's what I had um, to. So it's the tendency to perceive a connection or meaningful pattern between unrelated or random things, so such as objects or ideas. And that's just from good old Webster's. And... Um, as I researched through, I was like, one of the things to note, and I saw that in several articles, and the articles Matt will post up there if people want to research more on that, um, that this term came around during, um, by a German neurologist named uh, Klaus Conrad. And so he uh, was from like 1905 to 1961, and he was in Germany, he was a Nazi, and his specialty was schizophrenia. And mm -hmm. so um, he described it more as a psychotic thought process. And nowadays, we actually, we've adopted this to be part of our human nature, this idea mm -hmm. of seeing patterns in things. And mm -hmm. so that was interesting that, and I was thinking back through t history with other things as well, that terms and the way that we used to look at life you know we lived much more in the ego there wasn't the level of spirituality there is now there was mm -hmm. religion there was dogma there was what you should do and shouldn't do but it wasn't necessarily the same types of connections and relationships we have with um you know spiritual centeredness and so to me this is part of our evolution and back mm -hmm. then that they would consider this idea of patterns as being schizophrenic or <laughs> a right. bad thing you yeah. know whereas like I was like oh well this is what I do all the time and that mm -hmm. was part of the journey of discovering and this mm -hmm. what did you see well it's interesting because if we go back even before that and you look at the patterns uh, when you talk about evolution there would need to be the pattern of figuring out um, what does uh, what what do I want to eat and when I'm looking uh, way back, I'm, I'm talking evolution back to figuring out from animals to people, humans evolving. We have to figure out, you know, what things do I eat? What things am I attracted to just to, for the evolution of the species? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So then the evolution of spirituality all the way to that. So I think it's interesting in that regard because that's what the, the thing is, is about figuring out those patterns. And I was talking before the show with Matt about the fact that even viruses 
pick up patterns. In fact, I wrote it down Ooh. and I didn't, it, but the viruses, actually, that's how they survive because they pick up on patterns and then they adjust. So they even have this apophenia. Wow. Yeah, I, th I thought that was interesting just yeah. given what's going on in the world right now. Um, but I noticed it said an error of perception when you have random patterns. And, but as spiritual people, we don't look at them as an error in perception necessarily. Correct. And I do find it interesting, Megan, how they would go so far as to say, well, the guy in, remember that show, um, A Beautiful Mind? Yeah. And who was the actor in that? Um, I love him. Um, only because oh. you asked me. Is it Russell Crowe? Russell yes. Crow. Russell mm -hmm. Crowe, thank you. Um, so Russell Crowe, he played the, um, the, real, the guy's real name was John Nash, and he was an MIT physicist. And he had a beautiful mind because apparently more creative people mm -hmm. uh, have maybe more pr of a propensity to see patterns. patterns. And I'm thinking, well, I'm out. <laughs> so I don't see that uh, piece, that face and a piece of toast or whatever. And everybody else does. Everybody right. else is like, oh, do you see that? That man in the mountain? And I'm like, nope, don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> However, we'll put those things on, you know, on um, the groups uh, on Facebook. You'll see them, you know. Oh, you, yeah, In yeah. the tree, do you see, you know, do you, I see 10 people in there. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't see any of them. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and I yeah. see all of that. Yeah, so. you'll see all of them because you're, more, you're very creative. You're yeah, really, I mean, you're totally. an artist and all that. And, so, and I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm right there in my left brain, just not, I see a tree, you know, or there's a toaster with the little face. And I'm like, no, that's a toaster. That's so <laughs> right. funny. Yeah. But yeah, so he, this, if, if y'all have never seen that movie, A Beautiful Mind, first of all, incredible. Great movie. Great really movie. Good. But it was kind of sad, you know, but it's where we, like you said, where we are to how we kind of, judge what somebody is as far as are they schizophrenia has that gone over into a dangerous place of looking for these patterns right you know even with numerology oh yeah oh that's interesting point yeah well you know and that's one thing too they there was some testing done at some point um by a guy named uh, Bruger and um he was testing between people that were on different spectrums of paranoia with the pattern making, which was also interesting. Mm -hmm. um, because um, he was noticing overactivation in the brains, and particularly like on uh, the right side, the right hemisphere of the brain, and so being more stimulated, which was kind of an okay. interesting fact, which yeah. versus the left side. Um, but it's interesting in comparison to what we do because also I was looking at it as, um, you know, sometimes one of the things that they're considering as far as apophenia is, is like when you see uh, like the face of Mary or the face of Jesus in something and then all of a sudden that object becomes sacred or people worship it. And so, uh, you know, that's where it, it gets a little bit sometimes misguided versus the idea of an epiphany, which would be more of a spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what it was saying here. It's a true intuition of the world's interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that's more where you and I work. Mm -hmm. um, although I, they, one of the articles I was researching did mention psychics and all this, but I would like to say that I, I feel like our connections they clearly have meaning with people on a regular basis. Yes, they do. Yeah. So I, I whereas, you know, they really talk about an apophenia, at least in uh, statistics, it's a false positive. And I was like, well, I guess we're not statistical enough. I'm they keep sure. saying that, but then they brought it, the apophenia they bring up with gamblers. They'll say they call right. it to the gamblers what, um, good fortune or gamblers uh, use it for their statistical uh knack to win or something. I can't remember exactly how they put that. And they also say that the, well, there was a study, they being uh, another study that was done that said it's women, uh, people who are more religious. Mm -hmm. Now, I would call that maybe, I wonder if it's religious. It said religious That's as opposed okay. to spiritual, okay? Because to me, there's a difference, mm -hmm. subtle difference there. But um, And extroverts are more likely to find the Pareidolia. The difference here, and I don't know that you were talking right at the beginning about the difference. So there's this umbrella term of the apophenia, um, and then pareidolia is where you actually see 
an image or a sound in maybe like you see a toaster and then you see on the toaster it looks like it's a face. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there's just, it's not really worth getting into all the subtle differences of the connotation of the, of the words or definitions, but it is like a subset of apophenia, right? Right. Pareidolia. Pare- I think you had it. Yeah, I think you had it right. Pareidolia. When you were mentioning the gambling, though, they were saying that was gambling odds. Yeah, thank you. Yes. And just and that idea is that if someone is, um, you know, you flip a coin, head or tails, and you get heads five times, then that sixth time you'll have more than a fifty percent chance Mm -hmm. of getting tails, whereas really you just have a fifty percent chance. Right. So, but. You but that's the associating the meaning. So that's what that's about. What I find interesting, though, is that I always say for what the work we do, mm-hmm. I've always wanted to, and uh, she's probably listening tonight, and I know you know we've had some on our show, or we're, and we're going to, psychologists and psychiatrists who actually understand the work we do and give nods to the work we do, as opposed to those who completely don't. Um, because... I always want somebody I can refer clients to, um, or myself, if I'm going through something that actually understands our work and oh, understands yeah. spirituality. Because if you don't, if you look back at the way they defined a lot of terms um, and schizophrenia and all those things, I mean, where's the line? Where is the line between somebody believing in patterns and numbers and, oh, I'm getting a message from the universe or I see um, I I received a message from the clouds because I saw a face in the clouds and somebody deciding that that person has something you know wrong with them right I mean there's a line at some point that a, a doctor would have to determine that but I've always thought of that because I remember when I worked at the DA's office and I've said this before I know on our show before but I think it bears repeating. I it was we really, really sad. I was what well, I was a prosecutor there, and there would be the people with the little the foil hats and um, often homeless. And I think they were homeless because they had mental illness. And I think mm-hmm. it was probably because of there were some on some form of the spectrum because right. they would see things and they'd say, "No, I see a pattern." And they would talk about patterns. They'd say you know, something was talking to them or they would see something again and again and again and they would say certain numbers over and over and over and at what point is that what we're talking about here? Right. It's a sign and it's a pattern versus it's an illness. Well, and in psychology and in psychotherapy, you know, it is now considered seeing those patterns, again, part of human nature, but, you know, that's the whole basis of the inkblot test. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, that is part of our understanding of human connection at this point. And I think one of the things we're going to begin to see is an evolution of this pattern and connection. Um, you know, I know one of the things for me as a small child was growing up just going, oh, God, please let me be normal. Please let mm-hmm. me grow up to be a normal person because... I saw everything interconnected, and I saw that as being a problem and being bad and as being a disservice. And so now now I can embrace that interconnectedness, and I feel, I actually feel that I am tapping into whatever else is out there in the universe when I'm working, Mm -hmm. Um, particularly during healing work more than readings, although sometimes... I, sometimes it depends on who I'm reading for or the time of day or whatever. It just sometimes it poof. Yeah. Um, but it is a connected download, more or less, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, which is way cooler than apophenia. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, I feel it like is. there's that spiritual connection. It but is. I just, I, I do think that we have, I don't think we were capable of being as spiritual 100 years ago as we are today, um, or even 50 years ago. Or, I don't know, not as capable, or, or I don't know, maybe it was simpler then, I, you know? I just think that, We have that, so many distractions yeah. that got in our way for so long, too. I wonder if we're not getting back to some basics, you know? Uh, I, I can law. agree with that, but I do think if you look at the way that people were treated 
back then, if you look back to the Industrial Revolution mm -hmm. and stuff, um, it was there was something that was so subhuman about it. Not all the time, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think there was. I'm talking way back before even that. You know, when we got back to if we just strip everything away, mm -hmm. you know, then then you were just trying to survive. You know, which got gets you back to you're looking for patterns for what to eat. You know, right. you don't really have time for much more than that. So yeah. that's the evolution. Yeah. Yep. So I think we have. Do you want to show a couple of those little? Oh yeah, they're fun so cool. Pictures. Not as cool as what we do, but no, I'm kidding. But um, Matt, do you have a couple of those? So this would be the paradelia. Okay, well, and that one's pretty darn obvious. If you don't or see Dahlia. a face in that, then you're definitely missing out. Well, here's out. what's sad about it. Because I kept looking at that, thinking that was a toaster earlier. <laughs> no way! <laughs> so every time... Clearly, you don't make much I, toast. Every time... I know what a toaster is. Is there is there a picture of a toaster on there? The next one's a toaster, right? Matt? I, do, I do not have a picture of a toaster on here. Oh, so my gosh. <laughs> you could have just said yes. Well, if I said yes and it didn't come up, then I'd be a liar. There's a good one. And now this one that I one's think great. is cool. That one's really cool. I uh, guess I do see the face of the shark in that toaster. Oh, yeah, or the fish. <laughs> um, now, how about, like, a, you know, you look at a socket. And sometimes there's a face in that. And there was actually a company for a while, an, uh, an electrical company, and that they had they named it Spro Sprocket like the Socket or something. Yeah. Sprocky. Anyway, that because there's always a face in your there's socket. There's always. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of cool. Oh, that one's brilliant. That one's cute. Really cute. He definitely needs to see the dentist. Yeah, that one's cute though. No, this one is sideways, but you can. I love too. that. That one's actually beautiful. Yeah, that's really cool. That looks like it's in front of some sort of ruin or something. Yeah, I was going to say, is that Machu Picchu? It kind of looks like that, yeah. Yeah, it's got that vibe. Mm -hmm. And look, there's like a ring around his nose with the cloud. It's mm -hmm. like he's um, exhaling a cigarette or something. Yeah. And then this, this <laughs> is the last one I have, which has been talked about forever. Oh. Yeah. Who didn't see a face in that? That one's kind of mm -hmm. creepy. What? Uh, do we know what that is? So that's a that's a, a mountain or something on Mars when they first took some images of Mars oh. and this came up. And I remember when I was a kid, um, this being the the biggest proof that there were aliens because it's like, look, they made mm. a face and it's looking at us. You know? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. yeah. That, that is... was everywhere for a long time. Yeah. So they, yeah that, that okay. The I miss yeah. I missed that one. That was pre-internet yeah. days. That's cool. No toasters. No toasters. No toasters. Okay. Uh, do we have time? What I was wondering, do, that little quiz, do we want to take it? Can you do that or not, that little quiz? Uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Give me one second. Of that course, cool. I, yeah. I am clearly don't fall in the creative. So, you know, when you look at those clouds, now that's like cloud scrying, It's but it's still, that's the method, I guess, of getting to where you see the things. Right. I, I, I sometimes will see it, you know. I, I fall into that peer pressure of wanting to go, yeah, yeah, I see it. But usually I'm like, nope, mm-mm, got nothing for you. Yeah, but I think that you feel things. Yeah, I'm more of that. You probably. know, and uh, so sometimes, uh, that's a weird thing. Like I say when I read cards that I'm getting the information from the picture. But I don't know that I am. I know that it's the information's channeling through and the picture somehow triggers that for yeah. me. But I don't know, I don't quite know what it is. Yeah, which is different ways yeah. of getting it. Do we so. have it, Matt? Uh, let me see. Let me While we're waiting on that, I'll tell you, Megan and I both have this book. Um, it's called Angel Numbers, and it's by Kyle Gray. Uh, so he's with Hay House. And many of you may have the one that was out before by Doreen Virtue. I've got that one in my office. I couldn't find it. But this is Angel Numbers uh, by Kyle Gray. And it gives you uh, meanings of just any kind of number. If you see a number, you can look it up. So just thought y'all might want to know about that one. I'm actually really glad you pulled that out. I, I gave my book a, a, away because mm -hmm. I wasn't using it. And I literally had someone come in today and ask me about a specific number. So I'm yeah. going to borrow that. I was like... Yes. 
oh, yeah. you have that out for me to look at. See, and I'm, I'm not reading into that. To me, that was the, the intuitive chemistry between yeah. us that you had that out yeah, that because I needed it to yeah. borrow it. There you go, synchronicity. So. Or, yeah, that's more us being in tune. All right, here we go with this okay, little test. This, okay, this should work. This is a little right. test. It's going to show you a few images, and it's going to ask you if you do or do not see a face uh, in these images. So we're going to take the test here. Okay. All right. Can you see a face in this image? I guess we're going to have to come to some sort of consensus here. Mine's n okay. No, not really. I see a wonky face in there, but I see a face. Yes. Should I should I say no or yes? I'm well, going to go no. You're the tiebreaker. You don't go, see the I'm face. Gonna, I mean, I see what they're trying to say. Like that's, but it's it not doesn't a great really face. Make I mean, a face. Come on, that doesn't look like a face. It's a bad really. face. I'm going to say that. It says 59 percent of people couldn't see a face here. All right, the next one. How about here? Do you see a face in this? Oh. Um, I see two little, yes, I see two little guys popping up out of that. Yes. Michelle? No. Nah. You don't see those little faces on them? I mean, yeah, yeah that looks like, the, oh, the little people. Little yeah, they're, they're like little people. Faces. Oh, okay, two little people. I say yes. Okay. 70% of people said yes. Okay. Two All little right. How about here? Oh, yeah, totally. He look, that looks like a big... He's like from Popeye. Scooby -Doo. Oh, Popeye, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally a Popeye kind of guy there. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll say yes. 88% of people agree with us. Yes, we see a face. Uh, no, wait a second. How about here? Oh, oh yeah, I see him. His, the little coffee cups are the eyes. So the first time I did this, I couldn't see, I thought it was like. You were looking over there. Over right. here, but <gasps> now. Oh, there's another one over there. I guess there could be. There's. It's a profile. Yeah. He's like a Pac-Man kind okay, of. Okay, so now show me. So right here, I think, is what they're talking about. Right. There's uh, a face. Uh, eye, eye, and like a uh, straight mouth. And like right a straight here. mouth. Going. But the guy on the right, out of the silver medal, that's an eye, and he's got a big oh, front yeah, tooth. Yeah. I, yeah, like and he's chomping man. down uh, si sideways. He's going sideways. Okay. So okay. Yeah, we'll say yes. 71% of people said yes. Uh, how about here? You have to see that. I can see what okay. they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Eye, eye, yeah. nose, face. Right yeah. There. He's not very happy, that face. 98% yeah. of people Everybody said yes. Everybody saw that Okay. It's a stapler, isn't it, or something? Okay, console of a car with the vents. Totally. I mean, I see it. And there's this yeah, he's got a little yeah. nose. Mouth open. Mouth right here. Yeah. Um, um, um. yeah. With so a 12 vote. 91% uh, of people agreed. Uh, oh, frowny face. Totally, yeah. Okay. I mean, okay, since they're prompting us to look for a face, I'm going to find it. But if I had just saw this in the world, I don't think you I would You wouldn't go, oh, my gosh, there's a face, I and it. I'm getting a yeah. message from this face. I right. Yeah. yeah, right. I wouldn't go, oh, But, how yes, cool exactly, is this? they're prompting us. Yeah. yeah I'm like, I actually probably do see faces in a lot of things. That's something I'll yeah. recognize. A lot of people do, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to say no on this one. Yeah. Well, okay. Although I'm in the mi minority, apparently. Yeah. Out here. Oh, we're getting trickier. <sighs> well, I mean, I see the eyes and kind of a beak. I see kind of a bird or an, face. Or an elephant, maybe? I'm going to have to go no on that. That one's not very clear to me. I wouldn't be walking down the street and go, oh, look I would not face. pick that out as a face, yeah. uh, but I can see it in the photo. Yeah. yeah. Again, 33% of people. I feel like people are lying on that one. Uh, it's just disturbing. It <laughs> is! <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big yawn. <laughs> it's just it's like... Oh, no. Um, I, it's no, kind I, of feminine, too. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm not going to. They're, they're only asking about faces. <laughs> um, yeah, I so see that. a big mouth with teeth. Yeah, with teeth. Yeah, it's the teeth here that really make it creepy. Yeah. yeah. It, mm -hmm. That is just creepy. And All right, last one. Ways. I see the face on that one. I can see the face on that Yeah, one. and it also looks like two people hugging. It looks very masculine on that one. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I'm getting into 62%. it. This is amazing. Oh. <laughs> All right. We saw faces in seven out of ten pictures. You're more likely than 44% of people to see faces. So we're in the. As a group, we are. Yes, Megan as would a group probably. We are. I, I, I saw faces yeah, at all. I think like you were on. driving the averages up. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. That's interesting. That's my creative right brain yeah. hemisphere lighting well, up like a firecracker. What was that? A strawberry? We were. <laughs> No, that was a pepper. It was a pepper. Right? I was, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know what it was. A yeah. toaster. Uh, yeah, you thought it was a toaster. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I mean, I can't even identify the objects, much less see the faces in the object. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So. I used to love that book, How Are You Peeling? And somebody took fruits and vegetables and made them faces that show, oh. expressed different emotions for kids. It was That'd a great cute. book. 
Yeah. So, well, do you want to do some readings? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so guys, we're going to do some charm readings for you all today. And so if you've never done this before, you're in for a little treat. Mm -hmm. Um, but what we do with that is we'll pick a couple charms and then we'll do readings for those charms. And so the charm, you pick one of the charms and then that reading will apply to you. And Michelle and I love these because we read together on them. And so it's always interesting because we really draw in different information. And so um, you can get a lot of extra zip out of the reading, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So, okay. You pull out the cards and I'm excited to use this Light Sears Tarot cannot find it anywhere right now. Soltopia sold out, even Amazon sold out. So, um, but it is a super cool deck and I have to say it's a hot item. <laughs> yeah, we are trying to get it in. Yeah, mm. please hold me one when you do. Okay, so let's see what we've got for our terms. I'm trying not to do that into the microphone. Sorry, guys. Okay, so today, um, are we doing two or three? You decide. Okay, let's, I think we have time for three because it'll be about five minutes each. All right, so first charm is a compass. So if you are seeking direction, oh, right here. Um, Matt's like pointing me out. There is the compass. We also have a ghost um, who's going boo um, in case you're feeling like you're sort of ghosty or people aren't seeing you right now. And then the third charm is an elephant. And so... You know, you might choose the elephant if you're feeling um, like you need to expand or you need to be in charge. Are we doing three cards? Um, yeah, let's okay. just do the compass first. I'll move these guys out okay, of Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 you're good. Are you okay on your... Yeah. Okay, so we're reading for the compass first. Oh, do you want to put three cards out or just one? Oh, I didn't know. I thought... I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm confused. Okay, three cards for the compass. Right. Yeah, sorry now guys, we're just it. getting back into things, so this is how it rolls. Oh, that's that's just always okay. me. <laughs> so, um, okay. All right, we've got four of pentacles in reverse, two of wands in reverse, and seven of swords direct. Mm -hmm. um, compass and direction. I know, yeah, I'm sorry, it's going to take me just a second. I'm getting kind of a tough reading for this. Are you? A little bit. Yeah. You want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I, during these kind of sh confusing times, things are, we, we don't know which way, way to go, a lot of us. Uh, things seem seemed turned every which way. So it what we don't really have, it feels like we don't really have a North Star. Uh, we've kind of lost mm -hmm. our North Star in a way. It's, it's just uh, things are upside down. And so... This, this four of pentacles in reverse, what things that we thought we had planned and how to prepare for the future and how to feel secure and how to um, hold on to our, even even talking about money, okay, mm -hmm. how to prepare, things just seem turned upside down right now. So that's confusing us. And we're thinking and looking to uh, ways to financially, relationships, business-wise, we're looking for answers and it feels like right now um, some of us are still just feeling very very confused uh, this is really what I'm getting for this We're, okay we are having trouble finding and the I, I just getting keep getting that North Star and what I'm getting is is you to shine light on the thing that is causing you your most fear whatever you fear the most mm -hmm. Try to shine a spotlight on it and look at that shadow side um, mm -hmm. is when I'm, I'm really just put just put a spotlight on it and look at it and talk to somebody about it because I just feel a lot of confusion from people. Yeah. Well, and I'm also, I, mine it, it feels even a little bit more difficult. Um, I'm kind of picking up, you know, this sense of stress about finances, maybe some debt, not feeling like you're in your place in the world, not sure how to find your place in the world. And I, I really want you to be cautious to not take risks that are going to put you over the edge because I feel like there's a, a sense of desperation here. And if you act on that, it feels like it's going to get you in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, you need to hang tight. 
you might need to you know, conserve finances, live with someone for a while, take a step back, but this is, this feels complex, and don't just jump to conclusions on things. Think it through. Okay. Now, let's take a look at that ghost. Um, oh, do you, do you want to look at numbers? You know, I'm going to do, I just randomly open to 102. Okay. For these. Take time to know that the stronger your relationship with yourself, the stronger your connections with will be with God, angels, and others. I just pulled it since we're doing synchronicity. So oh, for that's that great. card, 102 is the, what I got for that awesome. reading. Okay. okay. Why don't you put those back Just threw that at you. Oh, no, I love that. That was good. We need synchronicities. And, you know, it's interesting we were talking about psychology as well today because next week we have a psychologist coming on. Yay. Oh, it's no, wait, that's not next week. But is we it? do. That's, uh, it, it'll be this month. Yeah, so. this month. We've got some really good guests coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're excited. All right. All right. So if you've gotten the ghost, okay, we have Six of Swords, we have the wheel and we have knight of swords okay i'm gonna look at this little mm -hmm. go for it um so i feel like you've been feeling a little vulnerable um and maybe sometimes not all there maybe a little cloudy in the head too um but i will say for you things are getting better and you are finally getting into that good cycle and your energy is picking up um and I'm also picking up some sexual energy on this, um, uh, just from uh, the breasts and then the dice hanging around that feels masculine to me. Um, so I feel like your sexual energy is kind of rising and building as well. Um, and you're ready to move forward. And this is really, that's a lot of action, um, which is interesting to get from swords. Uh, because it's really a thought process card, but I, I do feel like you're finally breaking through and kind of coming out of this shell, and you are are ready to go for it and just own your own thoughts. Go ahead, Michelle. No, I think that's really good. I agree with that, Megan. It, it feels as if there was this time of rest that we had, or this time of kind of a respite that you've had, to kind of examine it's kind of the opposite of the last reading mm -hmm. to examine things and to look at this ghost maybe the the fears the 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 shadows the the things that are concerning us and then we're looking at them and now we're i love coming out of both of her hands out of one side it's this white wispy energy and out of the other mm. side it's this black wispy energy and it's like just kind of like psh, you know, like power coming out mm -hmm. of both hands. And so that this time of contemplation has been really good for you. And now it is time to kind of start chasing after uh, what you want in life. It, it's, it's a lot of intellectual things, but not to let things get away from you. I feel mm -hmm. like this, it's interesting in this deck because it's a motorcycle instead of a horse. Right. But to not let it get away from you. There's something about that to make right. sure that you still or staying on the horse and not let things just go get out get of control. carried away yeah don't get carried away um but this this feels more like facing fears mm -hmm. and and really um going for it but don't go too crazy yeah and right i just now. getting clear on your sense of direction which i think mm -hmm. had been kind of foggy or listless for a while and you're definitely going forward into a better place yeah i agree with that let's see i got 590 Five nine zero. God is grateful that you are finally back on the spiritual pathway. Mm. The diversion you took was necessary, though, as now you will appreciate who you are and who you have become. Awesome. So that was time for yeah. contemplation. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. When do we go into Mercury retrograde, by the way? Uh, today. Today. Yep. Official. Okay. There we go. Luckily, Venus will be out next week, I mm. believe, on the 20th. I think it's the 26th. So, oh, and we have solar eclipse um, on the summer solstice and yeah. uh, on Sunday. Um, although some places I read solar eclipse is Saturday. Some places I read it is Sunday. So I'm not quite yeah, sure. Depends on where you live. Um, and there was, oh, and new moon on Sunday. Yeah. So good energy for me. That means starting a diet. Set your water out. And we always set our water out for our. Oh, our, nice. Yeah. yeah. To infuse. 
Okay, oh. so we got our little elephant. Oh, it's an elephant. Yeah, and it's got little swirly things on it. It's kind of sweet little elephant. And the trunk is up, um, so as if it's giving itself a bath and cooling off. Hmm. Okay. okay, so. And, oh, mm. and we got two of the same I wonder cards. If I didn't, I, yeah, Do you want to reshuffle? Yeah, let, let me okay. reshuffle. Here, why don't you draw this time? Okay. I feel like I'm not. I'm going to look at this little elephant. Okay. Oh, he is cute. And I would like to make a comment that if anybody is interested in these rings that Michelle and I had on, I literally bought this off of Michelle's finger <laughs> because it's so fantastic. They're and really she sells them here at Soltopia, and Aww, they're artisan so pieces. They're really neato. What is it called? What is it again? So they're A, B, like the letter A, B, quartz. So then when they get a little... That little covering over them, kind of like a mystic quartz. Okay, yeah, Maybe it's just quartz. so beautiful. Shiny. All right, elephant, what do we have? I'm just going to turn as I go. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, clearly didn't shuffle those. Okay, so we have six of pentacles, three of cups, and seven of wands in reverse. Mm. And uh, please feel free to dive in if you know what you want to say. Um, to me, this looks like, uh, I'm not sure I have the full reading, but I'll start. Uh, it looks like a, a flow. I'm not sure how Elef Mr. L Elephant comes in yet. But it feels like there's been this flow of give and take between you and, it's, I feel it's like more about between you and other people. Um, a flow of, of really uh, give and take and, and, and with your friends and it's, and you're getting to a point where you don't feel like it's the seven wands. I keep noticing it's mm -hmm. in reverse. You you feel um, isolated in the sense that you don't feel like people are coming at you and bugging you and trying to pick at you like they used to. You really feel comfortable with your friends. Um, like it, it's it's like they're not picking at you, um, or you don't feel like that anymore. You feel safe with the people in your circle. I would agree with that totally. Yeah, I feel like the give and take of energy has finally really been balanced out in your relationships. And you know, you think about an elephant and it is a very familial creature. They're mm -hmm. very social. They stick they stick together. Um, they know their kind and what they're about. Um, and you've got so much transformation and these girls are walking away from a situation and so they've been yeah. through an experience already so I feel like you've really gotten clear on your tribe and this idea of um, not feeling isolated anymore in some ways um, that you can connect now it's interesting as we go into Mercury retrograde too because that seven of wands is you know going to challenge maybe some of that communication and you might feel as you know the um, as COVID is picking back up too that you've got to isolate again and feeling resistant to that mm -hmm. um, but I feel like you've done the work that you needed to do and evolving these relationships and you know that is part of that Venus retrograde energy mm -hmm. is to have introspection and weed out those friends that maybe aren't so good to you and don't know how to give uh, give back so I feel yeah. this is very positive. I do too. I love how she's turned um, on the seven of wands in reverse. I mm -hmm. love how she just has her head turned to the side, like, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm yeah, not we're not going there. Yeah, yeah, I'm not entertaining that nonsense anymore. Uh, these issues the, coming at me actually even look kind of pretty. You know, they're uh -huh. actually yeah, they're rainbow. Pretty, yeah, wands that are coming at me, and I'm in my bubble, and I'm okay. For now, um, I can shine my light out to you and namaste, but I'm turning my head and saying no, yeah. thank you, right? Well, and I love how your southern manners came in there on that one because she was like, um, <laughs> the way you handled it, what did you say? She's turning her head. <laughs> She's, no thank you to that. Yeah. And I love that you p mentioned that his trunk is up, kind of like mm -hmm. he's, th that to me is a playful um, Absolutely. stance too. Yeah. With the friends and finding a good little group of friends, a good a good core group to yeah. be with. Well, and we talked about that trunk being up, too, as if he was spraying water on himself, which is that self-nurturing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important aspect that we see here. It's like, you know how to take care of yourself now. You know who's good for you. And I think that's a really key elements. Mm -hmm. 
So. It's interesting in each of the readings, at least in two of them, I noticed something about, we didn't necessarily say it this way, but about the flow of energy going in and out. We had, um, I think the four of pentacles and we had the sense of pentacles. I could be wrong, but I, I'm just getting intuitively to mention we had the flow of energy going in and out, whether that's friendship, but it's also money. You mentioned right. be careful with your money and what you're doing with it. Be careful. I'm going to get that again, that we might want to, we're going into time that we might want to be careful mm -hmm. with the flow of our energy. And I'm going to say that, be blunt about that right now, money, that we might right. want to be watching that. It seemed to come up at least in two readings. I feel some flow of money. Well, and that's really interesting. You just triggered something else for someone who might've picked the elephant. Um, if you've been someone who's very social and being out a lot right now, um, I want you to be extra cautious because I could also see this as coming up as illness. So I could uh, too. breaking through that COVID bubble. So just kind of be careful uh, if if the friendship reading wasn't connecting. What that are might those be numbers? Six, three, seven. Uh huh. You gonna uh, look those up? I am. Right on. Go girl. Let's see what it says. All right. So the numbers of the cards were six, three, seven. Know that your intentions and manifestation prayers are being noted and answered in the perfect time space sequence for your soul and the highest good of the world. Your angels are encouraging you to trust and be patient. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. I love that. Yeah. Man, I wish I hadn't gotten rid of my book. I don't know. The only thing about these books, if you want me to be blunt, here I go. You go, girl. They're very general, okay? It's like they all start sounding the same. Trust That's, I think, why I got rid of it. Trust in the universe to be okay. Then yeah, you're fine. Okay, number the next one. Trust in the universe and things look good. And the next one, things look good. Trust in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> and they all start saying. Well, and that's one thing, you know, as we have to be very conscious, conscientious of, because sometimes when like you work an event or whatever, and you have a group of people, there will be a theme, but there's also like, you got to be able to read people individually. Yeah. So, do. cause you always hear about the psychic that tells one person something and tells <laughs> the next person the same thing. And it's like, Oh no, we don't want that to happen. Uh, but I guess if I had to come up with 999 meanings, I guess mine would start off sounding the same. They too. might feel kind of repetitive. Maybe after, you know, 820. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, That's but a lot of. You know what? If you're channeling them, they should actually. You would think. I'll be different. But it's a great book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys good for today? Yeah. All right. Well, yes, everyone, right. you have been listening to Third Eye Thinkers or watching us, and we thank you for joining us. So please don't forget to subscribe to our, our show uh, or follow us. And we're on Facebook, on YouTube, all the podcast channels. And we'll be here again next week at 730. Yeah. So we look forward to seeing you then.